The King of Camelot. Bullshit LBJ. Tricky Dick. That Guy. Peanut Farmer. The Gipper. Bush the Elder. Slick Willie. The Dipshit, I, I mean the Decider. Barry and Hill. In the grand scheme of history, I get the feeling that the last few monikers when naming presidents will probably be the first black one and the first woman. So 200 years after the beginning of our republic, why did it take so long for us to elect a non-Protestant white guy? Tucson Studios in Arizona. This is the One Minute History Podcast. Here's your host, the hardest working man on the internet, Casanaya. You might think that the answer to the question posed at the beginning of the podcast would be easy to answer. Why did it take so long to elect someone? who wasn't a Protestant white man? Racism? Sexism? Discrimination? That's the answer, right? Well, yes, that's the answer. That That is, that is, that's, that's the answer. That's it. Well, to keep this from being the shortest podcast ever, let's actually get into the nitty gritty of discrimination in its many forms. The United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has this convenient list of all of the fantastic ways you can discriminate based on bullshit physical characteristics, while not caring about the content of a person's character. Age discrimination, because, you know, fuck those old people, they're stupid. Or those young people, they're stupid too. Eh, Stupid. Disability discrimination, because it's that person's fault they are in a wheelchair. They chose to be disabled. Isn't that right, Bible? They are an abomination, just like wearing a cotton poly blend shirt or planting soy and corn in the same field. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I'm talking about something else that gets discriminated against. We'll get to that later. National origin discrimination, because fuck that guy from over there. Pregnancy discrimination, because, well, she's pregnant. She can't do anything now. Race or color discrimination, because they're a different shade of skin. Huh, fuck them. Religious discrimination, because religious discrimination because my absurd beliefs are so much more legitimate than your absurd beliefs. Sexual orientation discrimination, because fuck the gays. Sex discrimination, because fuck the females. The newest form with legal protections. Genetic information discrimination, because fuck those bald people. Fuck that lady who might get cancer. We can't give her health coverage. It'll cost us money, probably. And if you're a fan of Star Trek, or sci-fi fans in general, you probably recognize the forward-thinking species discrimination. In Star Trek, discrimination is completely obliterated among humans because racism, or more accurately, speciesism, still exists. That's the spirit. Why don't you come with me, Chief? Kill a few Cardis. It'll be like old times. So even in the far future, illogical bias still remains a problem. Make no mistake. Racism discrimination in general, have had no positive effect on anyone ever. Discrimination can only and always inaccurately negatively affect a person's potential. Discrimination is not a distant subject to Hillary Clinton. I wanted to be an astronaut. So when I was about 13, I wrote to NASA and asked what I needed to do to try to be an astronaut. And of course, there weren't any women astronauts. 
and NASA wrote me back and said there would not be any women astronauts, and I was just crestfallen. That 13-year-old girl who wanted to do something extraordinary was rejected out of hand for the stupidest fucking reason imaginable. Discrimination. NASA was not accepting any interest for women astronauts at the time because mm, they were women. Now, because I'm not an asshole, I do research to verify the veracity of people's statements. If this could not be proven, then I would not attribute it to Hillary Clinton. I would not have this story in my Hillary Clinton podcast, after all. When I first heard this story, I wept. I fully admit that I cry when I am faced with real injustice. I could see that this 13-year-old girl... A woman with so much promise, just look at her, she's probably the next president, being rejected only because she had the wrong set of genitals. Discrimination can only and always inaccurately, negatively affect a person's potential. So this powerful story needed to be proven. In my first minute of research, I found the fucktards at IHateTheMedia.com with an article titled 15 More Tall Tales Told by Politicians. Now, a title like that might sound nonpartisan until you look at the list being composed only of Democrats, as if Republicans have never lied. Still, the entry on Hillary Clinton and her NASA story may have merit in fact The evidence it gives for the story's falsehood, quote, Wall Street Journal columnist James Taranto notes that Sally Ride was less than four years younger than Hillary when she became the first U.S. woman in space, casting doubt on the validity of Clinton's claim, end quote. Oh, and the next line gives you a really great idea of how intelligent the reporting of this website is with the item listed as, and I quote, Hillary has always a Yankee fan. Let me say that again, because this is the way it's listed on the actual website. Hillary has always a Yankee fan. No, I don't know what they're trying to say there. I had to get it from context. And yes, I was reading it. (laughs) I was reading this sentence as it was constructed. Now, this research has revealed that the website seems to be run by uh, a collage of total dumb fucktards, but let's continue the research. In minute two, I found an article from the Examiner that talks about the investigation by space journalist Jim Oberg, fully admitting that women were just not accepted by NASA at the time, but that Clinton's experience of the letter, uh, she was scarred by as a little child could either have read differently or been a lie perhaps then merely in minute three we find actual copies examples of these letters as they existed and it is exactly as clinton described it now the research that jim oberg did is understandable the physical letter had not emerged until july of 2000 Now, the fucktards at IHateTheMedia.com are completely worthy of scorn. First, their argument isn't valid as the premise is not the age of Sally Ride compared to Hillary Clinton when Sally Ride was an astronaut, but at the time at which Hillary Clinton asked through letter to be an astronaut. For the record, the letter would have been sent around 1961 when Hillary Clinton was 13. Sally Ride was the first female astronaut in 1983. That's a difference of 22 years. Now, if you're just listening to the podcast, you can't see what the actual rejection letter says. So let me read the full text of the letter to you. 
The letter comes from the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, Washington 25, D.C., February 26, 1962. It's addressed to Spencer A., the University of Connecticut, Stores, Connecticut. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Dear Miss Kelly, this is in response to your letter of February 20, 1962. Your offer to go on a space mission is commendable, and we are very grateful. This is to advise that we have no existing program concerning women astronauts, nor do we contemplate any such plan. We appreciate your interest and support of the nation's space program. Sincerely, O. B. Lloyd, Jr., Director, Public Information. Now, this was in February of 1962. This is the same exact time period that Hillary Clinton says she got her rejection letter. So why, oh, why, pray tell, would a website or a journalist do so little research or none at all to prove their dogma? If the truth doesn't fit in their dogma, they reject it as a lie or ignore it altogether. The dumb fucktards who read these blatant distortions don't bother to verify themselves. They take it as gospel. Why? Because they have a broken bullshit meter. And truthiness makes them feel better. They cannot detect when an entire website or newspaper or news network is full of shit. Even when I went back to look at the Examiner article on space journalist Jim Oberg, I find a categorical effort at deception. Jim Oberg's actual findings were very inconclusive, and he loudly proclaimed this. The Wall Street Journal article given as evidence by the fucktards at IHateMedia.com was also filled with doubt as to whether this could be verified, because the evidence didn't exist at the time. But what is more important to fucktards is to have the evidence fit the dogma. Unfortunately, I hope you all listening are stronger and smarter than that. We don't have to look hard for other cases of this kind of bullshit. Benghazi. What you're going to see is a conservative speaker that takes a conservative Congress that puts a strategy to fight and win. And let me give you one example. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. Why? Because she's untrustable. Obama's birth certificate. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? I, I think he probably... He have to? Because I have to, and everybody else has to, Whoopi. I'm sure Why that you can't he show, show his birth certificate. Excuse me. <laughs> Why? No, excuse me. I really believe there's a birth certificate. Solyndra. An independent inspector general looked at this investment and concluded that the administration had steered money to friends and family, to campaign contributors. So that statement, it, we now know, is, is not accurate. Factcheck.org said this about that. So far, there's nothing except a year-old statement that the inspector general was looking into it. The ad suggests cases had already been discovered. That's not true. The Washington Post, which did a similar analysis, said this. Records do not establish that anyone pressured the Energy Department to approve the cylindered loan to benefit political contributors. Acorn. And you said in the videos last week related to the Acorn, you said to the uh, you're allowed, the videos, you're allowed allowed to, out that the videos wait, were wait, part are, of a you nationwide think it's Acorn legal? child prostitution investigation. Yeah. A nationwide child prostitution investigation. In fact, the videos that you guys put out didn't even support those allegations. And again, nobody was charged with any crime. And the only people even right. suggested prostitution was you. And the video doesn't show any of that. If you can't find evidence of actual wrongdoing against someone, you really want to see look like a bad guy then just make up a bunch of shit you know how you hate Barack Obama not disappointed 
Not wish he handled certain issues in one way or another or met your ridiculous expectations in another, but hate him! Just really want to nail him. You had a good run on the birth certificate thing, but turns out he had one. <laughs> you worked real hard on the secret Muslim who will hand over our nation to the caliphate route, then he went out and killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Acorn, Reverend Wright, Bill Ayers, Tony Redsko, high unemployment, two to three wars, and the guy's still hanging around 40% approved. Fact will always be fact. It doesn't matter how you feel about it or how much you don't like it. As Neil deGrasse Tyson says about scientific fact... <laughs> uh, you know, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. You see, that's the... <laughs> I'm just saying. That's very good. One Minute History with Cass and I on YouTube and the podcast can only be heard if you share this with your friends, post it, and talk about it with others. To support, you can check us out at OneMinuteHistory.com. That is one, the digit one, minute history.com. For everyone who has supported One Minute History, we thank you. Next week, we're going to be talking about Ryan Reynolds. A quick addition to this week's topic. When doing research for a future episode about Donald Trump, and oh my lord, is it a doozy of an episode, I am really looking forward to you hearing it. I found that a little bit of research revealed that a stellar piece of evidence that I was going to use in the podcast was a complete fake, and that I couldn't use it. Now, if I had been dogmatic, I would have kept it in as it would have greatly helped my argument. But I didn't, because the truth is always the truth. Fact is always going to be fact, and I'm not an asshole. So please, don't be one yourself. For One Minute History, my name is Cass Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. <laughs>